everyone. Good I think morning. we're on now, aren't we? At least the two, three, or three, two, one went away, so that's good. That, yeah, that, double that, check it. Double check it. We are, uh, the little thing's still spinning, but I think we're, oh, there, I think now there. we're live. Yeah. <laughs> I can't really figure, I don't know what I'm doing, but it says, it says live up there. 10 seconds. But that, the 10 seconds, but that there's a long time before that, there's a little circle that quit spinning, so I don't know when okay. it's on. But we're on 18 seconds now, so good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Had a, had some people yesterday who were here. We had a wonderful service yesterday, but some people who were here say they watch this all the time, and they're very thankful for it. So those of you who commented on what we get to do every day, we're thankful that you appreciate it, and we're glad that you're here. And uh, We hope we reach people and train them in Christ and help them to become uh, people of the book of Acts. And that's where we're going to go now. Since we've, since we've moved away from the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, we're going to go to the book of Acts. Um, and so we started that yesterday at, on Sunday morning. And so we'll, uh, we'll continue that in a little bit, but let's, let's find out what we should pray for today. Um, we had a person in our church pass away. We just found out about it. They called you. Yeah. Yeah. It Gary. was, uh, Gary Scholler. Um, his wife is Diana Scholler, and he passed away in his sleep. I don't know if it was this morning or last night. Yeah. So we need to pray for the family. Yeah, pray for that. them. She's she's pretty broken up. I'm I'm sure I asked uh, Niall to call. There's because we were gonna. We just found out a second ago, a little bit ago. So I wanted to have Niall call because we knew we were gonna be on here. And so anyway, um, we love you. If you if anybody from that family is listening, we love you. We're praying for you. We'll continue to pray for you today. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? How about how's that doing? I don't. I don't know. I haven't I, heard. I haven't yeah. heard either. Yeah. I know. I think they're still going. He's still going through physical problems, so we need to continue to pray for him. Yeah. As his wife endures yeah. through that. I think. Yeah. His his wife. That's hard for her. That's a tough, tough, tough yeah. thing. It would be tough for any of us, but it's really difficult for her. So we need to pray for them, bless them with prayer, ask the Lord to take care of them. Uh, Anything, anyone else, anything else you can think of? I know um, my family, um, my mom is not doing well. Oh, yeah. And right. so we met yesterday. It was a, yeah. it, it was a miracle and stuff. We just met for an hour, but there are changes we have to do, but she doesn't have long. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, and, and we know she's ready to go. Yeah. Be with God, so. Yeah, but that's a tough one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, um, there's also it. Specific families of the youth are going through some hard times. Yeah. And so, uh, like 10, about 10 to 12 families of that. But the good news is, um, I see a lot of them, they're through a particular game that they play, they're actually reaching out to each other and praying for each other. Oh, good. So good. it's good to see that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on out there, but we're hearing all kinds of doors banging out there. Office work. <laughs> Office work. Office work is happening. It's like, well, it's hard to concentrate with all that. I don't know if you heard that or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. I, mean, it's just, I, think, I think they're going into the, the, the treasury room there to oh. figure things out, but <laughs> whatever. Um, so anyway, we have those people to pray for. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think families are hurting all over the place. I think it's a really difficult time. I... I, I I don't think that children, honestly, I don't think that children are doing as well as we want them to or can do um, when they're out of school. And so I think it's a tough thing. I, I think it's really hard. Um, but anyway, so children at home and trying to do school at home and all that stuff is difficult. Your kids got were allowed to go back to school because they are in private school. That's good. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a really good, good thing. They. Yeah. They resumed, you know, they even started playing sports. Oh, good. You know, and so it's it's nice to see, you know, life like somewhat no, Going you know, back to normal, normal a little bit, yeah. But yeah. it's not like that for everyone, and so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we wish it could be. I know that there's some concern in the United States about the spikes. Uh, we hear that on the news. If you're listening to the news, that's what everybody followed with this morning. Since six o'clock this morning, every half hour they, you know, they redo their newscast. So it's like everybody's following with the conversation about the spikes in COVID. Um, yeah, and so you know that's a concern. I'm sure that there are spikes. Some people, some people don't believe that that's true. I don't know how why you wouldn't believe that's true, but we need to pray for people. We uh, people are weary. People are just wore out, and you know, lots of people set home and. 
and don't do anything with their life except watch TV and, and those people who are just watching television or listening to stuff. And it's really, it's really going to be an epidemic, I think, a, a, another epidemic like we talked about yesterday of, of a mental health epidemic where people are going to have a hard time trying to, you know, yeah. balance their life and get joy back into their life. That's going to be a difficult time for people. So Christians, Christians should be able to overcome that with the Lord. Really, truly, I mean that. Um, and, and if people will turn to the Lord, they'll overcome that. So hopefully people will see people turning to the Lord. I, you know, we've been praying for churches that have been staying open. And there's a church in Los Angeles that's staying open been staying open in, near Los Angeles. I don't know if it's in Los Angeles, but over there in SoCal somewhere. Um, uh, uh, it's interesting because uh, they said, I heard them on, on Saturday being interviewed on the radio, and they said they had over, they had 1,004 new baptisms since COVID started. People are coming to the Lord, and they're they're growing, and they, they're meeting outside in their parking lot, as well as inside, and they have like 1,200 chairs set up outside every week for people, plus what they have inside, and they're they're just having church regularly, normally. You know, and Uriel and I were talking about that a little bit earlier. Um, you know, everybody's open except the church right now, it seems. Seems uh, like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and restaurants. I, I feel bad for restaurants. They're, they have takeout stuff, but everybody seems to be open for restaurants and, and takeout stuff, so... We just really need to pray for people. We need to really, really um, ask people to ask, ask the Lord to help people. So anyway, but you know the beauty of this, where I've talked to different people, random people, uh -huh. and then um, a part-time chaplain. But there are people that realize, like you know, we still got to keep living life. You know, whatever you that whatever yeah. that looks like for you. Everybody's circumstances is different. Live life. I'll give you an example. Yeah, Last week, yeah. I walked into um, into a Home Depot, right, just uh -huh. to buy some supplies, and everybody was just like zombies. It was weird. It was it was uh, wow. like eight, eight thirty nine. It was just like in just very somber. In the morning, you mean? No, at night. At night. At oh. night. Yeah. It's as if we're closing. And then this song comes on. It's you know it's it's called Lean on Me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the the cash register name was Sonia, and Sonia was really tired. And I said, you know what, Sonia? How cool is it that you know, if people would just live life, you know, and, and be happy, you know, it doesn't have to be like, so she's like, I know, I know. As I said, I mean, and she started dancing to the song. And I said, you know what, dance, go ahead and dance. We're, we're meant to be happy. We don't have to let like an epidemic or a, a lockdown stop, stop, uh, you know, stop from, she's like, yeah, you're right. So she starts dancing and I start singing. And then there's people just raising their hands doing this number. <laughs> And, and that's all it was, you know, just to put a smile on somebody's face. And she said, you know, thank you. Yeah. And so to say is live life. Right. You know, live life. Yeah. You know, it's, it is amazing how, how the things of God can bring great pleasure to us. And even songs, you know, music, God, that's God's God created music and even music. And, uh, even when David went, when David would go play his harp for yeah. Saul, when, when Saul was depressed. You know, I, I just, I, I just, I know that there's a lot of those kinds of things that are happening. Our, my hope is that what we'll discover in the near future is we'll discover that people are becoming the church, yes. and because they're they because they're acting as the church. I mean, we already are that, but sometimes we don't live it out. But when we start living out who we are as Christians, um, I, I I really want to see the joy of Christ be in people. And so, you know, that's kind of why we're going through the book of Acts, because the book of Acts is a conversation about people who are living out their faith and they're writing the next chapter in, in, in the church. And that's why it's recorded as that as that next chapter in the church, the chapter after Jesus ascends to the Father. So, so our lives can write other chapters as well. Our lives will write chapters that the Father will recognize and read, um, and it'll be a great thing. It'll be a great thing when we, when we're able to live out who we already are. And so, you know, that's good that you had joy and you shared that with those people. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and it's like what you said. You know, the very thing we're going to talk about is the Holy Spirit in Acts. You know, be an influence, be an ambassador that Christ has called you to be to people around you in your little small community, whatever that looks like. You know, and I mean, you'll see how God will just bless you and 
and watch over you. But like you said something very key, the joy of the Lord. You know, Paul yeah. talks about that. Let that be your safeguard. Let that be you know, <laughs> what you experience. You know, that the night of the world calls joy, but joy yeah. of the spirit, which is so different than well, what the world calls joy. It's not the joy of the world. It's the joy of the Lord. Joy, did <laughs> I see the joy of the world? No, no, no. Just now. You said it's different. So the joy that okay. we the joy that we need yeah, you said it right. Okay. The joy that we need to the joy that we need to to understand it's not my joy yes. it's not the world's joy it's the joy of the lord is my strength the bible says yes so it's god's joy the joy of god god's joy is my strength so it's it, some so many times we think that's about our feelings it's not yeah. it's not my joy is my strength it, because joy comes and goes depending on circumstances you know yep it's hard sometimes life is tough and we're, we're seeing it right now and and so those are the kind of things we should pray for i think we yes. need to pray for for um, people to, to realize who Christ is and have his have his joy be their strength. It doesn't say the joy of the Lord is my joy. It says the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so I can get through, I'm strengthened, I'm bolstered up, I can get through anything because God has joy in me and joy in, in, in whatever, his creation and, and, and the way we glorify him and all of that. So the joy of the Lord is my strength. I want to bring joy to God through the way I live my life. That's what that's talking about. Anyway, so, yeah, we should we should pray. Anything else you can think about for prayer today? Just for tomorrow for the elections. Yeah, um, amen. I was day. hoping that would come up. <laughs> it's a big day tomorrow, man. It's yeah, we, you know, I I am so... I, you know, two things that I wanted to say about that. Um, I hope that we as Christians uh, will do what we know is right according to the word. Uh, and, and I believe that we will. Now, you may interpret the word differently than I do, and you, but, but at least you are trying to line everything up with the word in your life. So that's good. That's what you should do. Um, and God will sort it all out when he needs to do that. But but look, we're, we're we're pushing everything to the Word of God, letting the Word of God be our ruler, so everything matches up with that. It, it becomes the straight line that we use, so that we, it's our ruler. You know, like a like a twelve inch ruler. You know, it's it's our straight line, and so and so that's what the Word of God is. And so the deal is for us <clears throat> is that um, we need to go. We need to practice our civil conversation, but. I think it's a very scary thing because I think some Christians are allowing themselves because they don't want to have conflict with anybody. I think people do this all the time, including Christians. When we don't want to have conflict with anybody, we allow ourselves to just just acquiesce. We just allow ourselves to just say, okay, whatever. you know, And, and we don't stand up for what we know is right. And there's a time for everything. There's a time to be quiet and there's a time to speak. And I just hope that we will speak when the time for us to speak is, is, is really um, very evident to us so that we can do that. I, I also hope that, that we don't let people move us from that. We don't become so fearful of the things that will happen. Like people are boarding up their, their street, you know, in Washington, D.C., and Rodeo Drive and every place else. They're boarding up all of their windows. Walmart stopped selling guns. Yeah, well, well you, can buy, you can buy ammunition and guns, uh, ammunition, though, but it's under the counter. They're hiding it. Yeah, so they're, they're... They don't want anybody... Nothing on display. Yeah, nothing's on display. <laughs> they don't want anybody to see oh, that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, people. the ammunition part of that. Yeah. So anyway, it's just, it's crazy. But what we were saying about Walmart... Oh, uh, just don't let the fear of don't let the fear of of what's happening in the world control you just let the holy spirit control you that yeah. that's the important thing and that's one of my prayers for the church is that is that fear will not control us but god will control us and we have to realize that you know i have i told people yesterday i haven't never, i've not been afraid of this coronavirus maybe i should be but i haven't been i'm not fearful of it what i but what what i am is i'm deceived sometimes and, and the Bible says that Satan has come to deceive the nations. Well, he's deceiving the nations right now. And, and he's deceiving the nations through things that are not truthful and honest. And it's hard to even know what truth is anymore, isn't it? When you, when you <laughs> it, I mean, are things really as bad as they are? Or are they worse than people are telling us or whatever, right? I mean, it's just hard to know what the truth is. Uh, um, so anyway, we just need to pray that God's Holy Spirit will help us not be deceived 
in this time, this really difficult time. And we need to we need to vote. We need to vote our vote the person that we think should be um, in office in all offices, governors and in congressmen and senators and presidents and whatever. We need to vote and make sure that we're doing doing what God wants us to do there. Anyway, those are the things I like to pray for. You want you like to start us out in prayer? Sure. Lord, uh, we thank you for such a time that we're in. Um, Lord, um, we just pray for today, Lord. All we have is the moment. We can't control yesterday. We can't control tomorrow, Lord. We can't, we, we only have is right now. And so we pray, uh, Lord, for uh, the power of your Holy Spirit to work through us. And in us, Father, uh, we spoke about joy. Your joy is not as the world uh, calls joy, Lord. And so when we, joy, Paul would say, is our safeguard. Lord, uh, joy is out the strength for us, Father. And so, Lord, we pray today for the specific families, Lord, uh, for the Shola family. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lord, would you just uh, watch over them, Father? Just I would pray, Father, for that family as they're going through this time of of, uh, of this loss, um, that you, Lord God, would just protect them, bless them. We pray for those for us to come alongside them to help them in any way, Lord, financially, physically, and spiritually. Um, we also continue to pray, Lord, as we have mentioned, uh, children, youth, uh, young adults, people, Father, that are just being so affected by this lockdown and the COVID, and families that are staying home, some are out. But, Lord, I would pray that you comfort wherever they're at, um, Lord, that, that you, Lord, would just continue to work in them, Father, that only you can. Lord, you remain yesterday. You, you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so when we know that, Father, you're the one thing that's constant in our lives, and Father, we're going to be talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, of what He does, and what and what He does through Your people, and, and out of Acts one. So, Lord, help us to learn that today. Lord, we also pray, Lord, for uh, the election tomorrow that's going to occur, Father, as the country is going to decide, you know, for a president, a vice president, uh, propositions that are going to be voted upon. So, I pray, Lord, for uh, for us that we would go out there and vote, Lord, according to Your Word. Um, please, Father, continue to work in such a time that we live in. I pray for the church to be the church, Lord. Lord, to proclaim the good news, you know, to evangelize the disciples, just to love on people, uh, Lord. As the good example we had on here on earth Lord, was your son of what he did, how he calls us, Father, to live a life, Lord, that when we say yes to Jesus, we count the cost, Lord, and, and we follow you. And then when we say yes to you, Lord, your Holy Spirit lives within us. And so I would pray, Lord, today as we dive into your word, let us learn from it, Lord, that uh, there, there's, there's always something for us to apply and to learn, because you have such a great love for us, Father. So I pray this in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father, for today. We just ask that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide us. Father, all the things that we've talked about that we are wanting to pray over, you've heard those things, Lord Jesus, and we just ask that you would minister and move in everything that we've talked about that you would be, Lord God, with people who are hurting, with the Scholar family, that you would be with people who desperately need your touch today. We pray that you would be the hound of heaven chasing after those who would need to know you and love you. And we pray, Lord God, that your word today would transform our lives. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for being with all those people that we have said that we would pray for in the past. We ask that you would, would minister to them, be with them, help them, Lord Jesus, hold them, Lord God, dear to yourself. And thank you, God, that that your joy is our strength. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you can be joyful. Thank you that you can be full of joy. Yes, Lord. And Lord God, that just the knowledge of that should bring us a great deal of strength. Thank you for the understanding of what that means. Build it in our spirit, we pray. We ask that you would be with the book of Acts as we read through it, study it as we as it transforms our lives. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to read you a story today. Um, it's uh, a story about William Mitchell Ramsey. And this gentleman uh, was born in 1851, and he died in 1939. Um, he was converted to Christianity, but he was converted to Christianity trying, he was an archaeologist, trying to find an archaeological proof to debunk the book of Acts. That's what he was trying to do. He did not believe in God. He was he was an atheist. He didn't grow he didn't grow up as as a Christian, and he thought if he could debunk the proof the, the if he could debunk the Book of Acts and he could prove that the Book of Acts was wrong, 
that he would um, he would be able to to show everyone what foolishness they they were thinking about when they were thinking about Christianity. So let me just read this to you. Instead of debunking the book of Acts, he found evidence that supported the historical accuracy of the book of Acts, which debunked his atheistic beliefs <laughs> and backfired on him. William Ramsey was a renowned archaeologist and, uh, and New Testament scholar from Scotland. He was knighted by the British crown for his work in archaeology. So he was, he, was very, he was very good at what he did. He was raised an atheist and as a brilliant student of the University of Aberdeen in Scotland and at Oxford University in England, he sat at the feet of theological modernists and skeptics who disbelieved the Bible. It was assumed that the Bible is not historically accurate and that it contained a large portion of mythology. It was thought that the book of Acts was not written until 150 AD, which is not true, about a century after the events it describes. When Ramsey began archaeologically and historical research in Asia Minor beginning in 1881, he expected and hoped to find some more evidence against the Bible. Instead, he discovered fact after fact that supported the Bible. He eventually concluded that the book of Acts was written during the lifetime of the apostles and that, is, and that it was historically accurate. He, his discoveries led to, the convert, led to his conversion to Christianity. I think that's amazing. Listen with Josh Medell, who, who, was, who was an atheist, who was a philosopher and tried to disprove Christianity and became a Christian. Listen to what he says about Ramsey. He spent years deliberating, preparing himself for the announced task of heading an exploration, an exploration expedition into Asia Minor and Palestine, where he would find the evidence that the book of Acts was the product of ambitious monks and not the book from heaven it claimed to be. He regarded the weakest spot in the whole New Testament to be the story of Paul's travels. Well, that would be interesting because Paul wrote two-thirds two of the New Testament. Those had never been thoroughly investigated by one on the spot. And you have to realize that in the book of Acts, the last part of the book of Acts is the three missionary journeys. It, it chronicles the three mission, missionary journeys of Paul. So if he could prove that those missionary journeys, the last part of the book of Acts, were false, then everything fell away. He's, he, he, quipped, he was equipped as no other man had been. He went to the home of the Bible, where here he spent 15 years digging. So he was in Palestine where the Bible was written. He spent 15 years digging. Then in 1896, he published a large volume, St. Paul, the Traveler and Roman Citizen. The book caused a furor of dismay among the skeptics of the world. Its attitude was utterly unexpected because it was contrary to the announced intention of the author years before. For 20 years after the publication, book after book came from the pen of the same author, each filled with additional evidence uh, of the exact minute truthful, minute, excuse me, truthfulness of the whole New Testament as tested by the space on the spot. These books have stood the test of time, not one having been refuted nor have I found in even any attempt to refute them. <laughs> so do you, see, do you hear what that says? He tried, he, he tried to debunk it. He spent all these years, and, and every time he tried to debunk the book of Acts, he just found that what the book of Acts said was historically correct. W William Ramsey, this is what he said. The present writer takes the view, the present writer being William Ramsey, the present writer takes the view that Luke's his history is unsurpassed in respect to its trustworthiness. Isn't that amazing? It is unsurpassed in respect to its trustworthiness. The book of Acts is unsurpassed in the respect to its trustworthiness. At this point, we are describing what reasons and arguments change the mind of one who began under the impression that the history was written long after the events and that it was untrustworthy as a whole. Wow, isn't that amazing? So what you have today is, is that's just a little conversation about the book of Acts. And it's a conversation about the book of Acts from William Ramsey and, and about William Ramsey. It's, and, and this has happened over and over and over again. People have tried to disprove the Bible 
they try to disprove what it says. When they try to disprove it, they get if, if they're serious and honest, they get involved in all the work like this archaeological dig yeah. for these for these many, many years that fifteen years that this guy was doing it for. And and they end up becoming Christians. <laughs> you know, is it because because the book that you call the Bible with all the books in it, the book is historically and truthfully accurate in many, many, in every way, really. And so when this guy says, I'm an atheist, I'm going to, if I can disprove the book of Acts, because this is how the book of Acts is put together. In the beginning, it's, it's the apostles. And then in chapter nine, we see, and I'm giving you kind of an overview so you can, you'll know what we're going to study. In the beginning, the first nine chapters was, was the apostles and, and how, how they lived their life and what happened with them. And then in the ninth chapter, we have God speaking to Saul, who became Paul. And then in the last part of the book of Acts, we have Paul's three missionary journeys that are recorded. So that's what the book of Acts is put, that's how it's put together. The first part is the apostles. The second part are the uh, is the apostle Paul and his three missionary journeys and where he went. And everything that the book of Acts recorded was found by this archaeologist, and and none of his books have been un, none of his books have been proven to be false. This this Ramsey who wrote these books, people have looked at this stuff and they have to agree with it because it's all true. So even the people who have examined Ramsey's stuff about the Book of Acts can't find that it's false, which tells you that the Book of Acts is is a, a very accurate historical book about what happened in the beginning of the church. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. And it goes. I think it goes that in other books as well. To where, when you begin to do, um, you investigate for yourself. You diligently seek and try to discover. God will reveal. You know, there's a scripture that says that you know God is rewarded for those who, who seek Him. And that word, like what Ramsey did, he be, that word is to seek. It's kind of like you you're playing um, investigator, and says so you begin to investigate. You know, you discover these things because I was like Ramsey too when it came to particular things. You're an archaeologist, no? <laughs> but I think <laughs> just kidding. I think for us, but you are a, you are were a searcher of the truth. I was a yeah. searcher of the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I grew up religious, yeah. all of that, but I realized like I didn't want to trust people. You know, I questioned and questioned. I want to know if this Jesus is for real. And so you see people like Ramsey who do this, and as you begin to investigate actual particular data that's there, you begin to discover. And I discovered there was a real Red Sea that, that was discovered under the Black Sea. There was, you know, uh, proof of, of creation when I was in school. You know, I began to question things. But the, the evidence is there. It's just a matter of you just beginning to research it. Yeah. You begin to discover, like, wow, there is truth to the Bible. Right. Right. You know, right. God has given us, right. you know, the evidence is out there. And it's just a matter, like you said, as we seek it out like Ramsey did, you build upon that. You know, and you begin to see like this is real. You know, you right. can't deny it. Right. right. Ramsey's like he come, he falls in lines of many other people that discovered the Bible is real. Right. Right. Well, but but it's not just it, it it is real. But but it's not just the reality of it. It's the accuracy of it that yes. Ramsey that Ramsey changed Ramsey's mind from being an atheist, and 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 for centuries I have to tell you folks for centuries. People in, 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 in these major universities and, and uh, seminaries, which are supposed to be places that teach about God, and for centuries, these places have denounced, denounced the Bible. They've denounced the resurrection. They've said, we don't believe in the virgin birth. We don't, how can any of this stuff happen? For centuries, the people who are teaching the pastors, <laughs> the people that are going to pastor, have been telling people that these things aren't true. So when we find someone like Ramsey, who's been taught in Oxford University, who's been taught in these major universities in, in, in Europe, who's been, who was, when he was alive, who was taught in all these places, and he was taught that it's just, it's just, it's just stories, it's just, it's just whimsical, it, it, it's, it's all made up, and you can't really believe any of it. And so that he believed that with all his heart, and he grew up in an atheist home that believed that. And when he goes out and he starts digging in Palestine, where he starts digging where all this stuff took place, where he spends 15 years doing that, and then he publishes a paper and says, it's true. What the Bible says is true. When someone like that does it, 
it makes it makes an impact on the rest of us because who of us is going to go spend all that time digging up stuff i mean yeah. i'm not interested i'm not interested in digging through the dirt but i'm thankful that god sends some people to the world that are and those people are teaching us and they have given their life to christ because what they discovered showed them that christ was real so that's what that's where we're hit. That's where we're at. So that's the book of Acts. And so let's let's dig into it a little bit. You want to start with it? We started yesterday on Sunday. And we started yesterday talking about faithful and powerful. And faithful and powerful really, really were the truth, the, the conversation that Jesus wanted his church to know after he was raised from the dead and before he was ascended to the Father. And that's important because that leads you into the very first three verses of the book of Acts. Now, let's watch this. We'll start, we'll kind of back up a little bit and bring some stuff to the forefront that we talked about earlier with the book of Acts on yesterday uh, at service. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of rehash some of that. It says, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach. That's verse one. Well, in verse one, his former book was the the Gospel of Luke. The, Luke is writing, Dr. Luke, he's a physician, Dr. Luke is writing the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke. And so as, as Luke writes that, he's writing this to Theophilus. Theophilus must have been, in some of your Bibles, if you're following along this with, with your Bible, some of them have O Theophilus, like O, like a like an O, like, yeah. you know. And and that O Theophilus means that he must have been somebody of great importance. He probably was some kind of civil leader, some kind of a, a you know a, a mayor or a magistrate of some kind, you know, a governor or something. He was probably he was he probably had uh, political influence. And he was very powerful, and Paul, and excuse me, Luke was telling him, "Look, this is what I, this is what I saw, this is what I understand, this is what I heard, this is what happened after Jesus, after Jesus rose from the grave and was ascended to the. This is what happened for forty days. We're going to find out in three in three verses, and then after that, what happened with the rest of the church as it began." To become the church. So anyway, so that's who he's writing to. I write this about what Jesus and all that Jesus began to do and to teach. And he says began because Jesus is not through. You and I need to understand that. We really need to understand that. Look, if we're what we're supposed to be as Christians, we're, we should be writing our own book, right? There are things that have happened in your life, Uriel, that you give testimony to that that that's a book you're writing the the book of uriel <laughs> and, and it's like the book of acts but it's the book of uriel and and all the stuff that you do and all the things that you see and all the the things that are good and bad and everything else are your whole life it's a book of your life but but as a christian that book should be led by the holy spirit should be full of conversations and stories about how god is using your life to change your world is that what, and that's happening for you, right? Yeah, and, and, and in living in that book, as we write out the story, you know, um, you see here at Christ where he began the work that he did in the gospel, but it, like you said, it continues here in the book of Acts where, yeah, to our present day. And so it's yeah, neat. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. And it's neat how you can see the layout of Acts where he begins the church, you know, the establishment of the church. You can see all the leaders. He tells them not to leave Jerusalem because he established leaders in there, and then it leads to where Paul is living his life, right. you know. And so, yeah, it's it's a continual work of Christ that he. Yes, but what what I'm what, that's absolutely true, perfect. But what I want us to get to is, and you said it, you said it, it was perfect. I just want to reiterate it. Yes, it, it's it's the, it's their life. It's what they've done. It's all the stuff that's happened in their life, but it continues with our life. Yes. Jesus isn't finished yet. It's he's still at the very beginning. Today is a new day and today is a new beginning. And Jesus is still beginning and he's still teaching through you yes. and through me. So that's why this that's why this this conversation is so important. I wrote about all that Jesus began to do, okay? In my former book. What's his former book? The book of Acts. I mean the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, he's talked about the beginnings of Jesus. 
and he talked about what Jesus taught until the day he was taken up to heaven. That's when he ascended to the Father. That's what the book of Luke is, the Gospel of Luke is about. But he began it there, but it didn't end there. That's what I want you to see. It, and it doesn't end until he comes again. Yeah, and, then, right? and that's, it, it continues because that's what the Holy Spirit is doing right now. Right. You know, we call this the church age. Right. Where, you know, the when mm -hmm. when when Christ came, he originally came here for Israel. But because they rejected him as the Messiah, they're still waiting. You know, that opened the door for the church, you know. The for, Gentiles. Uh, the, yeah. the Gentiles, which is the rest of the world. And so the Holy Spirit is still active today, working in our lives, like what you were saying. And that's going to continue till he returns back. And he's coming back, you know, for the last seven years, as you and uh, Billy discussed, it's to save the nation of Israel. And until then, like you said, we continue to live our lives under the guidance of the Spirit. Keep writing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're doing great. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just lost my thought. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my fault. I'm sorry. Man. No, go ahead, I, I, go ahead. I, it says it this way in Matthew that we just finished. It says, and he will be with you till the ends of the age. Right? Yes. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and so know that. Continue to live your life for Christ. We, yeah. we started this yeah. conversation yeah. earlier with this COVID pandemic. This is a season. It's going to come and go. You know, and so for us, continue to live your life for the Lord. Live your, your life. Whatever God is doing as he's working in you, be be that example to others. As we're going to see here in the book of Acts and in the chat, the verses you're about to read, I think the things that you said yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That's good. Look, it goes on to say in verse 2, the last half of, of verse 2, uh, verse 2b, the, part, the second part of it, it says... He says that until he was taken up into heaven. And then it says, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles, he had chosen. So, look, this is really, this is so, there's so much in here. There's really an important statement. God, Jesus Christ, God the Son, Jesus Christ, he didn't do anything on his own power. He did everything under the power of the Holy Spirit. And it says it here, right? Watch this. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles, he had chosen. So in the Gospels, he chose the apostles. He instructed them through the Holy Spirit. That's why in John 14, 26, it says, I will teach you all things, talking about the Holy Spirit. I will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I know I make all kinds of mistakes when I teach. I know I get that. But, I, but that's why I pray that the Holy Spirit would correct those things in people's hearts and minds and thoughts so that, because I don't want to be, I don't want to be um, a person who, who gives a lot of information that's not true. So I pray that he guides me and I pray to, in the way I speak it and I, and, and Uriel, the way Uriel speaks it and the way you hear it, I pray that he guides that as well. And I like what he says right here. Um, for the instructions through the Holy Spirit. So right. you see here, Christ is also telling them through the Holy Spirit. Right. So, yeah. And so, you know, if he's doing that, as Rick had said, what do you think the Holy Spirit... That, that's how we learn. We, we work... The Holy Spirit works through us. Yeah, it, and it doesn't... That's the thing. It's, it's not stopped. This is it, yes, it, It's a continuum. That's what I want us to get as we go through the book of Acts. This is a continuation of the movement of God through his people who are you and me. And, and you're... It's, it's a continuation of God's writing his story through us. I, I want to find a way to say that that will get people to understand this. So that's what the book of Acts does. The book of Acts shows us the continuation of God's movement and then how we should expect him to continue to move in our lives because Jesus doesn't do anything different than he's already done. That's why he tells you in the Gospels that you'll leave and do greater things than he has done. He wants you to continue to do the stuff that he has done. Now, watch this, verse 3. Excuse me. After his suffering, he presented himself. Okay, what was his suffering? His death on the cross. Okay. After his suffering, he was presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. That's key right there. Yeah. Well, that, what did he teach, right? <laughs> the kingdom of God. Yeah. So what he taught was the kingdom of God. And what you're going to see unfold in the book of Acts is the kingdom of God. 
See, the kingdom of God, there's, there are three kingdoms, and we didn't get to, I didn't get to this yesterday, and I wish I would have, but we didn't. There are three kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God that will will be the last, when the end of the world is done, and God comes and, 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 the, and sets up a new, a new heaven and a new earth, and he's God. That's, that's his kingdom. There's a second kingdom. That kingdom is when he has a millennial reign on earth. He'll set up an earthly kingdom. But there's a kingdom now. And the kingdom that he has now is the kingdom that you and I are citizens of. He is the king. We are his citizens. And we're supposed to be doing the work of the kingdom. That's what we're supposed to be doing now. So there are three different kingdoms. The one now the one that will happen in the millennial reign and the one that happens when Jesus come, when when everything's finally done and he sets up a new heaven and a new earth and there and that's his ultimate kingdom that we know of so there are three kingdoms the one we're living in now is is just as powerful and it's just it's just as potent it's just as important in, in fact it's extremely important because the way we live the kingdom of God now in our lives tells how tells the world who Jesus is that's the kingdom of God we need to tell people about our king and and in the in the prayer of Jesus when Jesus when Jesus said it's called the Lord's prayer it, it I, I understand why it's called that but we call it the Lord's prayer our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name what's the next part thy kingdom thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven thy kingdom come Jesus says, pray every day that his kingdom comes here with me. Why? Because I'm a citizen of the king and the kingdom moves forward through me and what I do and how I operate in the Holy Spirit. That's what the book of Acts is trying to teach us to do and how to live. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and, and here's the thing. When you say yes to Jesus, right? You know, back it up to what you said. He Another version talks about he gave infallible proof okay yeah so that was before the kingdom before, yeah, 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 before yeah. the kingdom it's without error right so he's doing these things and instructing them and, and the thing that we need to understand when we said yes to christ we give up every right we, can, we count the cost of being his disciple and so if we know that it's a command yeah. we continue to do this it's not like oh when i feel like it or when i think no this is a thing that we are commanded to do right continually you know doing this because First he shows them before he dies on the cross, but then he continues that same thing of the kingdom. Hey, look, it doesn't stop. It's going to continue. Right. To like what you said, till I come back again. Until the end of the age. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the infallible proofs thing is interesting that you brought up because what's infallible is that, <laughs> is that the proofs are infallible. It's called infallible proofs. So what's infallible? The proofs. What are the proofs? Jesus showed up and said, here I am. I'm proving to you that I'm alive. I've risen from the dead like I said I was. So the proofs are infallible. That means you can't find you can't no find any faultness yeah. or error in the proof. And the proof is is that Jesus showed up. We talked about that before we started talking about the book of Acts. Well, you that, even, that 40 days. Yeah, go ahead. You mentioned that with the life of Ramsey. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Great yeah, example. Yeah. Here's one of the things that I did when I I love you shared about Ramsey. One of the things when I first came in, you know, in learning about this whole Jesus thing, I asked the questions, why? Why Jesus, right? Like uh, like the book, More Than Just a Carpenter, he's yeah, either yeah. real, he was a liar, he was a lunatic. And I asked the questions, why would millions or billions of people over the last 2,000 years follow this man? What makes him so different, so unique that people are being transformed? People yeah. are different. Right. And so when you discover that what the Holy Spirit does, he reveals to you as you search and you begin to see that what Christ did was without error. And so it makes you realize, like, this is, has to be real as you begin to search it like Ramsey did. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the infallible proof, he, he see, it's interesting because they didn't go search like Ramsey. They didn't go dig holes or whatever and search things like Ramsey's did. They just, they just were there. And God brought them God brought to them the proof that they needed because he had something specific for them to do. And they could no longer, like Doubting Thomas said, okay, now I believe. And what did Jesus say? Blessed are you, I'm thankful, and blessed are you that you believe, but more blessed are those who believe and don't see. 
That's what Jesus said, and that's us. So, so we need to understand that the proof was infallible. And, and you're right, Uriel, Ramsey, what Ramsey did was just added to that proof that Jesus is who he says he is, and the Bible is what it says it is. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's perfect. And I think it's important. That's why when you look at the word, that's why you read the word. Then the Holy Spirit instructs you and guides you to understand the word. And so as you begin to read this, you begin to see, oh, my goodness, that as Romans 1 would say, that God has made his invisible attributes visible for us to see that we cannot deny that we right. were that right. there is a good. creator yeah that's good and it's something greater but our problem is is sin sin comes in the world and it distorts as paul would say because we don't follow christ you know the, the sin of unbelief then we would rather worship creation than the creator right. and so that's why god says look i'm going to help you i'm going to do something at the cross is where everything just comes together Okay, so let's follow this the line of logic yes. that's in here. It, it, let, let me start from the beginning. In my former book, O Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. So what was the proof of? The proof was... Of his living he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God so that's that's what happened during that 40 day period he came and he spoke about the kingdom of God and now he's going to reveal the kingdom of God through the book of Acts and he's going to reveal the kingdom of God through your life as you continue to live out the book of Acts so verse 4 on one occasion while he was eating with them. So this is during the 40 days before he ascended to the, he was raised from the dead before he ascended to the Father. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, they didn't have any idea what that meant. They, they didn't know what it meant. They knew what baptism was. They knew, they knew what the word baptism meant. You remember, they, they, lots of them were John the Baptist's disciples, <laughs> and he baptized people. But what was, what was John's baptism? John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Remember the Bible says that? Yeah. So baptism has different, uh, has different meaning in some places. For example, if you're John and you're a disciple of John and now you've become a disciple of Christ because John's gone, he's, he's passed, passed on, he was beheaded, and, and, and all those disciples became the disciples of Jesus, followed Jesus, um, that wanted to. So here you go. These disciples, they hear about baptism. They think automatically about John the Baptist. When they think about John the Baptist, they think about the baptism of repentance. So what is baptism? What does that word really mean? We need to take a look at that. It's baptizo in the Greek, and it means initiated. The literal meaning of it is initiated into. It means being put into something. And so it says, do not leave Jerusalem. So Jesus is telling them, this is red letters if you have a red, red letter Bible. Do not leave Jerusalem. This is after, again, after he was raised from the dead before he ascended to the Father. And it says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised. Well, we know what that gift is. We know it's the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. That's why I know that he's I know he's talking about John the Baptist because he says this, John baptized with water. So he wants them to think about John's baptism. He wants them to get an idea of this baptism by comparing it to the idea of John the Baptist's baptism. Does that make sense? Because yeah. he gives us that he tells us that by giving us the illustration. So I'm just this that's why I'm talking about John the Baptist because Jesus is, right? Watch. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. What did that baptism look like? 
John put, he put you in the water. Baptism, the literal word baptizo means initiated or put into something. So when you're initiated into the water, what, the way we baptize people, we dunk people in the water, right? Yeah. We initiate them in the water and then we pull them out of the water and we baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we put them in the water and we bring them out. Well, John's baptism, when he did that, it was a baptism of repentance. They were repenting. Repenting of what? The remission of sins. Their sin. Well, they were repenting of, of not believing in God. They were repenting of living their life in a way that God would not be pleased with. They were repenting of, they were making a turn. What's the word repentance mean? The word repentance means turning 180 degrees. If I'm walking north, I turn and I walk south. If I'm walking west, I turn and I walk east. It's making a complete turn and walking, not and not continuing the path you're doing, but turning around and walking opposite the path you're doing. It's another word. It's also um, it means a turn. changing of mind. Yes, yeah, it's well, another term. It's a turning of, of yeah. your mind. It's a turning. That's a, it's a re, it's, It means you change your mind. Like you yeah. said, it's a turning of your mind. So you turn. So instead of walking for myself, I'm going to walk for righteousness. Instead of walking for my own lustful being, I'm going to walk for Christ's righteousness. And if I'm and if I was baptized by John the Baptist, I'm going to repent and I'm going to walk where I'm going to walk. And it, but it also meant something else. John the Baptist baptism also meant something else. Now, how do I know that? Watch this. Did Jesus have anything? Think about this. Did Jesus have anything to repent for? No. He had no sin. He was without sin. He was without sin, the Bible tells us. So why did they did Jesus go to John the Baptist? Why did he go to John the Baptist at that point to be baptized? If he wasn't if, if it wasn't a baptism of righteousness. Because he was he was to do it because he was commanded by his father. Okay, but okay, that's that's true. His father told him, but why did he do it? As an example, I mean, I don't know where you go. I'm not. I'm not. Well, there's a reason. Sabbath, there's a reason that Jesus. See that if you read theological conversations, you read you read commentaries, they'll ask you that question. Yeah. Why did Jesus need to be baptized? He he was. It wasn't a baptism of repentance. He wasn't repenting for anything. So what? But but he was being initiated into something. That's why the word initiation is really important. He was being put into something. When Jesus was baptized, what happened from heaven? The Father, the father the spoke. Yeah, the, and the Holy him. Spirit came down. Yeah, in a form, of, form a dove, of a dove. And the, and the Holy Spirit landed on him. And what else happened? And his father spoke. And said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Yes. Right? So what did he do? So what did Jesus do? Jesus, in his baptism, it wasn't a baptism of repentance. It was a baptism of initiation. He was being initiated into his ministry. The other word that also is found in the Greek is overwhelmed. Is another one that, for baptism? Yeah, it's it gives yeah. a different. Yeah, I don't. You know, it's yeah, a that's, different. yeah, that's not this. That's not this <laughs> one though. That that that, that <clears throat> this conversation is is the start of the ministry of Jesus Christ, right? And how do I know that it's the start of the ministry of Jesus Christ? Well. Because what did John the Baptist say about Jesus when he walked up to him in the desert to be baptized? He said, oh, there's my cousin, Jesus. No, he didn't say that at all. He said, here comes the Lamb of God, the one who will forgive the sins of the world. That's what he said. Look it up. So, so John the Baptist, take away, take away take the sins of the world in a different version. So, so here, comes, here comes Jesus. John the Baptist sees him. They're cousins. John the Baptist sees him. And he says, here comes Jesus. He will take away the sins of the world. And he brings him in and he baptizes him to begin or initiate his ministry. So when you're baptized, because you do have to have a, I do as a human being, we all do. All of us have sinned. The Bible says, if you've sinned, you need to, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we need to be baptized for repentance. We need to repent of our sin. And so the Bible tells us to be baptized. Now, you don't have to be baptized to go to heaven. It's a symbolic yeah. thing that says, I now repent of my sin. I'm going to turn away from my sin. 
But not only does that happen at baptism, something other happens at baptism, and it's the same thing that happened for Jesus. He was initiated into his ministry. He was, it was the beginning of his ministry. It was the starting place. And that's what you, and, and the way you're baptized is not into water, but you're baptized by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in you when you become a Christian. You are initiated or put into the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is put into you both ways, and that's the initiation into your, into your, into your adoption and into your ministry. Okay, so it's the same conversation. You're being baptized by the Holy Spirit into your ministry. Now that's important because again, you're going to be the body of Christ that goes into the world. You're going to be the church. You're going to be the ones who go in and bring the kingdom of God with you and you share it with the world. That's your job. Yeah, our part, yeah. you know, is... Does that make sense? It makes sense because yeah. it's nothing that I do in my own power, and my own strength. It's Amen. By, it's, Amen. By, it's by the power of the Spirit. Right. You say yes to, you say yes to Jesus, and the one that specifically comes in you is the Holy Spirit, and He seals you until the day of redemption. Right. He begins to work in your life, and so then He 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 does the threefold is, uh, you know, conviction, righteousness, and judgment. But like what you said, then you begin to do the things that he's called you to do. As what he said, he instructed, like what you said, he's, he's instructing the apostles right here to do the kingdom of work, the kingdom of God. To do the work of the kingdom of God. To do the work yeah, of yeah, the kingdom you're right, of God. You're right, you're right. Then we're continuing to do that in our lives. Right. And so whatever that looks like, you know, you do that for the glory of God. Right. So this is your initiation. When you become a Christian, you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. And so this is, there are some groups of people who say that, that baptism of the Spirit is a second work. I think filling of the Spirit is a second work. And baptism and filling are not the same thing, by the way. They, they, they almost mean opposite things. So, so those two words almost mean opposite things. And we'll talk about the filling later because I just want to stay on this, on this line, this, this conversation that, that, that Luke is giving us here. And so he's saying, look, you're going to be like Jesus. You're going to be initiated into your ministry when the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. And the Holy Spirit comes to live within you when? When you become a Christian. That's your baptism. That's what I believe. Then verse number six. Excuse me. It says, then they gathered around him and asked him. So he says this then. Don't leave Jerusalem. Uh, uh, but wait for the gift. See, this is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God. It says, but wait for the gift my father promised. W what was the? What did it say? It says, wait in Jerusalem until you've been clothed with power from on high. That's what it says in the in the Luke in the end of the book of Luke. Wait there until you've been clothed with power from on high. Why do you need to be clothed with power from on high? To do your ministry. <laughs> it's, it, it all fits, right? Okay, so he says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. He heard him speak about in, the, in Luke when he said, Wait in Jerusalem till you've been clothed with power from on high. For John baptized with water. Okay, let's understand baptism. But in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So there's a there's another conversation, another thing that's happening in baptism, and it's the same kind of baptism that Jesus had with John. It's an initiation into your ministry. And, and that's what that's talking about. Yeah, you, go ahead. I was gonna say on a side note, you know, when when you talk about ministry, you know, you're called to do what God calls you to do. And it's also a particular lifestyle. When you give yourself over to the control of the spirit, you think differently, you talk differently, and you behave differently in action. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's who you become. You become this new creature in Christ, and then the Holy Spirit compels you to live a lifestyle and to do that ministry that he's called you to do. Right. Well, it's, it's 11.59, or 10, excuse me, 10.59, so oh, we're ready? just one minute, yeah, we're just one minute away. So we probably won't go into the next part here. But this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to, because we've only gone through five verses. What I'm going to ask you to do is spend a few moments and just pray. And this is the prayer. You can repeat it after me. Dear Lord, I give you my life. I ask that you would show me the baptism of the Holy Spirit in my life. 
I ask that you would equip me to do the things that you've called me to do. I ask, Lord God, that you would clothe me with power from on high so that I might become who you want me to become, that I might live out my faith in the midst of others, that I might be the kingdom of God and share the kingdom of God and invite those around me to be a part of the kingdom of God. I pray, Lord God, that you would use me in a great way, that I might do what you call me to do, and that your kingdom may continue to go forth. In Jesus' name I pray, in faith, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Look, you are God's favorite, and he does want you to do that. He does want you to be that person. He wants you to understand that he is God and he has called you to something great. Go go get him, guys. <laughs> God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.